All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, the Sentient Sword, back with some more Darkest Dungeon 2. Ever since I played it, you know, I'm liking the differences between the first game and um, the second. Like, I'm starting to appreciate it more the more I play it. The wagon stuff, I, I guess, I mean, it's fun. I don't I think the driving aspect thing or whatever I don't know what's the point of the wagon being so wildly you know wacky and controlling it and there's always like little piles of crap on the road but they don't really do anything so it's kind of like there's no real reason to try to dodge anything in the first place I don't know so still kind of um, iffy well not iffy I'll give the wagon aspect a, a C because so far it just seems like it's there, it's something new, but, you know, it doesn't really do much. However, what I am really liking is, number one, the art style. I love the more detailed uh, characters and enemies. I'm appreciating some of the combat choices that, they're, that they've, they've made. Um, looking back at the past Darkest Dungeon, Darkest Dungeon 1 some there were some teams or some abilities that just they knock the enemy's ass out and you know once you discover them you use them i remember i um i still have a favorite team to this day it's like i remember take you were they're, they're the ones i used to get through the darkest dungeon the third part where you have to go through that long ass campaign to light all the torches or whatnot and it's like they obliterated the enemy. I mean, they were designed like as a moving uh, obliteration tank. Like they could both deal damage and kill and destroy, and they soaked up damage like crazy. Cause my healer was like a super nutso, like cleric, vestal healer, crazy as hell with the hell with the healing. The tank tanked so much damage. Um, I had the leper uh, for offense. I had the jester, who's both good at offense and good at de-stressing uh, your party. I mean, you could handle every situation. You know, if you needed offense, you had that. If you needed defense, you had that. If you needed uh, healing, you had that. If you needed stress reduction, you had that. Um, and Darkest Dungeon 2, especially starting with the um, beginning party, let me get this started a little bit while I'm running my mouth. Let's continue our expedition. Um, with this one, starting off with a set few characters without having the others unlocked, you know, I can see that you have to learn these characters it 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 forces you to you know you have to do like make the like what the title says make the best of a bad situation like your options are limited what do you do with what you have cuz these guys aren't the ideal guys you know I especially notice a lack of healing abilities um the the plague doctor and the grave robber are the only people that can do any form of healing outside of using items and and it's not like the vestal where it's a move that they can constantly do and keep the party going it's like they got maybe a handful of this and that and it only works in certain situations in the first place so it's like I don't even remember what these places are. Um, okay, what are we doing? Study the winding roads and routes of our kingdom. Find any advantage. Heroes with memories are required. Hearts and minds will carry the day. Um. So anyway, you gotta learn the characters, and the fights are much more um, hectic because of that. I mean, 
I think they're, they're especially the beginning team they don't suck but they are a little they're very underpowered especially the way combat changed um the enemies are way more buffed it's almost as if between darkest dungeon 1 and darkest dungeon 2 the you have become like the enemies of the old game you have a set amount of moves you have a set you know team of guys that you can't change whereas and you can only do one thing at a time like you can either attack or you can do a debuff or you can heal or you know something of that nature whereas the enemy they have moves that both smack everybody debuffs everybody or, or buffs themselves in the same uh, turn or round and it's like well damn you know what I mean it's so anyway um, I played a little bit off stream because uh, it also there's a lot I still need to learn about the mechanics and the gameplay of the of you know of this game like I just figured out the turn order is like up in the top right uh, I don't know why I didn't pay attention to that I'm used to in Darkest Dungeon 1 you only paid attention to the bottom because that's where all the information was you know what I mean the rest of it was just like world well, graphics I mean obviously you saw the graphics but there was no information beyond the torch there was no battle information there so it when I started seeing the pictures in the top right I'm like what and then it dawned on me that this is the turn order or whatever so I still have tons to learn so I did a little bit of playing off screen anyway I made it through another area and um I did lose a character Dismas got killed so I don't know if I go if I continue my expedition do I get another guy or do I have to start another land with only three people um, we're gonna find out on the stream so all right so what is this uh, trinkets okay I guess it's like buying st stuff to recall a thing is to make it real once more so these are all the things I have. What do I do with this? Yeah, I don't know where to go. Timeless wood, living city, working fields. I think, wasn't that where I was before? The intrepid coast. What's in the working field? Spare a thought for tools of iron. Such implements will serve us well. I don't understand like the difference between journeying in the lands and this screen here where like the last time I was like going to one like candle place to you know spin the candles now it's like that place is gone with no explanation and like these places I don't know the more they have to hold on to the harder they will fight Resolution. Okay, this makes guys stronger. What does this do? Oh, uh, res against death. Just death resolution. What's the second one do? Okay, what can 
he do? Skills ignore blind. Checking. Okay, so this makes your people better. Okay, yeah, let's spend candles on people. The true splendor of a world. Those who live within it. Can you just... Okay, it gets it, takes it anyway. Alright, so what's the third thing? I really hate it when the text box doesn't stay... Rolling powers, 25% max health. She definitely could use that. Takes four candles. What does this do? Uh, back rank roll with heavy emphasis on crit and reach. Effective skills. Well, what does that mean? Okay, this gives him repost and flicks things 33%. Okay, yeah, that's good. A little more light, a little more strength. 100% movement res, each ally on turn on start. 50% res to these elements, three turns. I don't know why hers doesn't say anything. Like, it's just telling her what she does. A back rank roll with a heavy emphasis on crit and reach. Okay, yeah. What does giving spinning candles? Unlocked dead eye hero path. I guess so. So let's give her. Uh, well, no. I don't know if I want her faster than him because he seems to. He seems to get a bonus from going first. Or something like that. What's next for her? Disease res. Two more to upgrade. Well, I just said that. Resist against stun. Stun. Res. I'm glad to see the old school characters. Runaway is new. Runaway is new. Fl Vestal, uh, Flagellant, Occultist, Leper, Jester, Hellion, and up here the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, those are all returning guys. Which is good to see. Runaway. I wonder what that person does. Stormbright Stark of a world. gets a shield. That's Those good. Who live within it.
Take these plenty of, I'll, I'll save my candles because those seem like you're getting trinkets and not skills. And so does this stuff carry the over have to, hold on to, to each to one? The harder they will okay, fight. it does seem that way. To recall a thing is to make it real once more. I don't understand this. And Devil Trinket Grave Robber. Okay, this probably built for her, so... Now what do I do with this? I have no idea. Deliver to the end, gain four candles and two things. It's like we were just at the end, and they didn't take no... They didn't take it, so what the freak? Spare a thought for tools of iron. Such implements will serve us well. Like, I wish I could see my inventory. Is the heart that warms the mind. Is this the same for all things? Journey. Inventory slot. Stage hold item slot. Resourcefulness. Arriving at Valley Inn. Unlocks pet slot on stagecoach. Orphan Wolf Cub. Stress, positive relationship chance. Unlocks filthy stage coat skin. Alright, these are just like cosmetic items. I don't, you probably can get that like after you beat the game or something because I don't see any reason to why you would want to just spend candles and battle hard as hell just to, you know, buy a, a skin when then the next fight you fight you're getting your butt kicked really bad because you didn't spend candles on powering up your people and you know your caravan and whatever so I don't know about all that but anyway what does this do fragile flame can now be found at the valley Inn. it amounts on the stagecoach what does this do minus 33 percent positive relationship chance minus 30 percent cent traveling flame drain three percent Might's flame. What the f? Heroes gain crit, and on meltdown gain native tokens. Enemy gain crit and enemy advantage chance. I don't see. What, I guess it's one up the difficulty. You can invest in this. Oh wow. Enemies have round in corpses transform into carrion eaters. Carrion eaters spawn in this way, leave no corpse. At various flame levels, heroes gain speed and minus res. Enemies gain plus res and on blah 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 resist, gain a positive. You take stress. Yeah, this just like really jacks your stuff up. So we're not gonna pick these two. Um, companionship, I guess. Five candles. So this will be 10 candles. This seems like 
a better line to go in. Stagecoach wheel points, armor points, inventory slots again. What is this? Location scouting, route scouting. Okay, yeah, seems like the next two are worth it. Three more, five more, that's eight. These wheels are invested with noble purpose. Every rotation, blessed rest for the warriors of our cause. Okay, so leave us with two. to the living city the road calls once more to its dark passenger hey 89 Christmas those are basically challenge runs open those and renown the house sure. on the borderlands. Oh, okay. Hey, thank you, uh, 89 Crispin. I really appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for watching. Uh, complete your confession. Denial. I guess. Gotta complete. Denial. The shackles of denial must be destroyed. Yeah, I, have, I know zero about this. This is my first time playing this. Interminable faculty socials became something of a delight. Knowing we'd abscond to a quiet table and lose ourselves in riveting discussion and passionate debate. The crossroads. Who will step forward into the light? I don't know. paths which are specializations. A different paths can have wildly different strengths and weaknesses which influence how you may wish to use that hero. Paths are unlocked for use at the altar of hope. Once unlocked they can be assigned at crossroads when you assemble your party at ends. It will when you assemble your party or at ends found at the mastery trainer for cost. Alright. Stage, as stagecoach drives, heroes will slowly heal HP. This healing rate can be improved with some stagecoach items. If heroes are badly wounded, try to avoid location fights and drive for a while to heal back up. Oh, cool. Conditions. Hero is five skill available. You must visit shrine reflection and unlock more skills. Alright. Conditions are usually long term buffs or debuffs that result from in item use. Devastating than the horrors of a hundred campaigns. Periclesis. Alright, um, let's see. I forgot how do you check their stats? They don't have any trinkets. No, no, so you start off, you start a new expedition, you don't have anything. No problem. It's all very overwhelming at first, but yeah, focus on that stage close top line for sure. And also open a few trinkets and items every time you're there. Alright, cool. 
So if you start a new expedition, you, you're getting brand new characters, brand new people. So they start off with, I guess, no stats, no nothing. So I guess each each expedition is like a run or a game, if I'm getting that right. And so I guess you're supposed to, uh, in order to like beat quote unquote Darkest Dungeon 2, you have to travel all the roads and all the lands, killing and beating up everything you encounter until there's no place left to go, I guess. Um, and without and without these people getting killed or whatnot, because they haven't said anything about how do I unlock new guys or whatever, because I don't think they really want you changing your team that much. Or maybe I'm doing something wrong to not unlock the other classes or something. But anyway, let's get the highwaymen back. Hunted. Hurried. You can't get oh, duplicates. Give and give I wouldn't want duplicates the of the damn... The way they nerfed the, the Plague Doctor, it's like, I wouldn't want to or her anyway. You def your party would definitely die because you can't they can't do enough damage with both of them locked on throwing bombs on the first row and stunning and a little bit of healing or a little bit of bleed or blight removal that doesn't do jack sh you know so anyway all right well let's get this started with new people I'm a slugger so one of the quirks she doesn't need Apply on hit, 5% chance to stun. Melee skills. Yeah, she, you know, that's from melee, and she, you're supposed to throw like bombs and stuff with her. Termogen, begrudgingly accepts the existence of others. Minus 10% positive relationship chance, plus 5% relationship chance. Okay. Alright, we have Flame Low, she gets more damage, but who wants to play that game? Pyrophobic, Flickering Flame, Fan Fear. If Fire, she loses crit. If Fire, at the round start, remove one positive token. Okay, she's afraid of being on fire, period. Alrighty. Sanguine. Resolute Chance, Positive Relationship Chance. Round start, minus stress 25% that's actually really good sickly he can get disease easy 20% chance for more disease cadaver hater versus dead dudes cadavers which another thing um in darkest dungeon 1 there was only like maybe five classes of monsters um hold on, let me read chat for a moment y'all Okay, alright. So first, let me say hello to Holger Q Zero. I'm, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, but hello, welcome in, thanks for watching. And I'm reading your comments on what to do. And, uh, okay, so yeah. Like, and I mean, I didn't even need, I haven't even so much as, like, looked online for a strategy or guide or anything. I, when I say I'm playing it blind, I'm literally, like, just download I bought it on sale started playing it because I mean Dark Dungeon 1 was great I really liked it um I beat the DLC and all that stuff so you know I'm I'm finding this to be like very pleasant he's a kleptomaniac consumed by the urge to steal so that's probably one of the worst things we can have so we have to take him to a field hospital get that quirk removed immediately that was bad in the first game because when they steal money that retards your progress in the long run because you need funds to heal people you know get rid of bad perks lock in positive quirks buy equipment you know all you know buy supplies so kleptos in your party would you know you you don't want to fight a hard run killing powerful monsters and risking your people's lives 
to come out with less loot because you know your party's full of kleptomaniacs you know what I mean so um, definitely gotta get that that's a bad one uh, anyway as I was saying before I started reading chat there's in Darkest Dungeon 1 there was really only like five kinds of enemies well maybe six if you count the DLC the, no seven if you count the DLCs because just the base game you had the skeletons in the ruins you had the mermen in the harbor you had the mushrooms and the creeps down in the woods and you had the pigmen in the sewers in the catacombs so that's four the fifth one were the the cultists the 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 darkest you know the ones that be up in the darkest dungeon temples and all that when you're getting down into the you know heart of the earth or whatever the hell the dark dimension or whatever that place took place in but you know those cultist dudes then when they introduced the deal so that makes five you got the cultists which have been brought to this game they're, they're like the main enemies now um anyway um you got cultists we'll see so far you got cultists pigmen mermen mushrooms and miscreants you know human beings and stuff and skeletons and undead and then DLC they came up with the insects the mosquitoes uh, or the beasts I guess the mosquitoes the insects I mean there was beasts in the woods but you know what I mean um, the the insect people the counts you know all the you know the different types of enemies the larvae and all that stuff and then the bosses and then with the meteorite content or I, I don't know why I, I forgot the name of the DLC but all I know is it's like meteorites and cosmic craziness or whatever but with that you had the crystal style enemies and the shadow enemies and stuff so that means seven no, yeah wait no no five yeah six seven okay yeah so here though so far it seems like that I was looking at I thought that I was in the for town and I was fighting things called gaunts you know they're like zombie women zombie men undead skeleton warriors all that kind of stuff so they always said gaunt underneath so I said okay gaunt means undead but then I played another map and it said these are cadavers so it's like well what the F you know dead and cadaver you know gaunt cadaver I bet you and then I seen cosmic and something else and I'm not thinking well damn you know like it seems like every guy is a different class and so that is like I think it's kind of annoying because you're really you're really like you know splitting hairs between a cadaver and a gaunt and a ghoul all three of them are zombie rotten you know enemies or whatever like undead is undead you know it seems like they're trying to make more than you know what really is but you know just an observation at the moment but anyway we have our team so we so guess basically we just gotta get rid of this dude's kleptomania as soon as possible and these all dudes I mean I don't know if they kept their skills or whatever I don't know if I did right but anyway let's go ahead and um go forward onward once again though all the world's horrors bar the way alright let's check people's stats um so no they don't keep the trinket and stuff like you said but they do if they survive they keep their traits so but these are all new people I had three survive the last one but these three are all new they have the same names Periclesis, Audrey and Dismas but they only have the same names but they're new their stats are new they don't have the upgraded skills I gave them the last time so maybe that's my fault but hey it's part of the learning curve anyway let's get going Oh, let's check the bag. No, there's nothing in the bag either. Hmm. The winds whip more harshly on the far side of the brook. 
I wish it was like super speed. You could be like. Bruh, 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 bruh. The bulwark of your denial is giving way. Okay, yeah. See so these guys. They're called Gaunts, if you look under their classification. Alright, but let's get started on this dude. See? Woodsman. Gaunt. But later on, they're gonna be... And you could clearly see he's like an undead, rotten kind of guy, or whatever. What did, what did I do the last time? Actually, I don't want her there. She can't use pick to the face. That sucks. Let's get rid of this chick. I don't want to take a turn uh, on wasted movement. Take the child, okay. Well, she's gonna protect this dude. Or maybe that doesn't say he's gonna guard her. Let's throw a knife and see if that's what it means. Nah, he ain't protecting her. He just put armor on himself. Damn, that's selfish. <laughs> All right, okay, hold on, let me re-chat. You lose the mastery points, yeah. You kind of start over every run, but not really. And there's that memory thing where people survive killing a boss, they can get stat boost. Okay, so you have to kill a boss while you're in the, the that land or whatever. I get you. Okay, because I saw that on the last path I was, that I was on, but my, condition, the, my party, they were so beat up. Um, because I didn't know that you had to keep the flames going by throwing the candle bombs or whatever in combat. I'm used to Darkest Dungeon 1 where you just tor clicked on the torch when it was getting low. Or if it was getting too low for you, you you know, click on the torch if you had some. And that I would see the candles in my inventory and I'm like, why doesn't they use a candle if it's getting dark? You know, I, I couldn't, you know... And so I'm running through the whole country with no light, you know, getting from place to place. Like, you know, when you assist the people, you can choose, like, if you look at the bottom, they'll give you more torch plus whatever. And I was steady having to pick the torch, like any option that gave me more light because I just didn't have any. I didn't, I couldn't figure out why the candle was always, or the hope, the flame of hope was going out and I couldn't. And I'm like, well, what the F do I do, you know? So by the time I got to the end of the map, I saw that I had two paths to take. And one said it was like a boss encounter, and the other one said it was like an oblivion encounter. And I'm thinking, well, I'd rather, and you know, all of them were like no HP. Like all four of them were still alive, but um, they all had like zero health. You know what I mean? Like each one only had like two or three points of health. And so I got into the last fight and Dismas got killed, got turned into a corpse. And um, the other three, I, I thought that I was going to lose the fight period because the enemies are really jacked, man. The, how they can, they can, the, the way they can attack you and buff or debuff themselves in the same move is like, damn, it was, it was like really difficult to deal with, but... Um, I kept fighting and I wind up killing them so three of them made it out alive but okay so it doesn't matter if you haven't killed the boss well, that, that makes sense I um I mean in I mean the end boss of a run the bosses during the areas are different but you will need to kill one of those area bosses layers before the end to be allowed to enter the end 
Oh, and there's a consumable in the ends that give flames, so that might help. Yeah, that's the one I wasn't using. I didn't know that you had to use it in battle. I had a ton of them in my inventory because they were... I wound up discarding some stacks because they were taking up so much space. And because I didn't know how, you know, you had to use them. Because in battle, they say they set you on fire. I'm like, I'm not going to use something that sets my guy on fire. You know what I mean? So, there was that. All right, so okay, let me actually do something in the dang game. I'm not very smart, ladies and gentlemen. My brain can only do like one thing at a time, so like talking takes up a lot of brain juice. So I, right, what's this guy? We corpsed one of those gaunt ladies. Um, this dude does need to be worked on. And then let's get some repost on this guy. I like that's that's one of my favorite moves with the duelist. Alright, let's keep the blight up. That one thing good thing about blight is it goes through armor. So it was useful as hell in the first game and it's useful in this game. Wow, it missed. Alright, let me throw more blight on. He's almost out of the game. Ah, oh, armor break. That's another thing I don't like. That in Deep Darkest... Well, not that I don't like, but what's different is in Darkest Dungeon 1 only you could be on death's door like the enemies once you got rid of their hit points they were dead you know what I mean there's no coming back I learned the hard way that as long as they have at least one point of that shield around them they're not gonna die no matter what the frick you do to them I mean you could hit them with like a crit for five billion damage and they'd still say oh my god death's door you know what I mean so I thought that was, and then that was happening to me and that when I was fighting those stupid cultists and they were doing all, I mean, it just seemed like there was so much jank and bull crap going on. You know what I mean? But I still kicked their ass. I lost a guy, but I still won. All right, well, let's get that shield off of his ass. And let's throw more knives at her. Yeah, we wanted the blight to make sure that he didn't get up again. And he can't do jack. Well, let's put tracking shot on her. Give somebody some extra damage. And it can't be her. Yeah, she can't do sh I really can't stand the um, plague doctor because she... Now it's like she's, she's a back row person that can't hit do rain I mean it's almost like tough guys fight in the front because they're tough and they work on guys you know that are in the front back row people are weaker so they work and they also focus on back row people she's like a back row she's like a back row person that tries to fight the front row and it's like well I already have people for the front row I need someone to handle the ranged assholes you know what I mean so it's almost like they knew how good the plague doctor was in darkest dungeon one so they're like there's no way in hell they're gonna make her we don't let the players get away with you know somebody so good in the second game because I'll, I'll say my favorites from the first were the leper which I didn't like at first I thought that he was too weak to bleed and blight but then I realized, just bring bandages or equipped trinkets to protect him or have quirks to protect him against bleeding and blight and you're good to go. You up his damage, you up his chance to crit, you up his accuracy, you know, you protect him with, you know, from, you know, bleeding and blight. I mean, he destroys everything. So, 
you got the leper you got the man at arms the leper destroys everything man at arms blocks everything um jester was good for both damage and stress relief vestal was like she i mean she's the absolute healer and you didn't other the occultists could heal other guys could do a little bit of healing or you know the hellion could self heal all that kind of but that was bull crap compared to the vestal the if you needed shit done you needed to be healed to keep dudes from getting turned into dead you know ground beef you get you need a vestal you know to heal you don't be playing games with other party members like the the arbalist the arbalist could do some healing with the the battle bandage or whatever and it's like but hell no nah. when it when crunch time came you couldn't rely on that kind of stuff and um, plague doctor was good because she cut through armor she could hit the back row and st stuff like bleed and blight it does damage even when you need to take a break to do something else like you need to heal or you need to you know do some other kind of combat move that doesn't do damage to the enemy it's like it allows you to still do damage and do something else in the same turn so I'm figuring for now for darkest dungeon 2 they're like no hell no man you can't be using no plague doctor <laughs> Uh, okay they can even reset it with a heal but some moves have execute to help deal with their death armor oh yeah you're right about that I've seen that I've seen them do that cheap more cheapness focus on those shrine or reflection nodes on your run so you get more skills for your heroes for the future I think PD I think Plague Doctor is even better in DD2. Oh, really? Okay. I think she's. I mean, I see that she's more like you. you she got more utility. I'll, I'll say that because the healing of the blood, you know, it it does heal and it gets rid of the bleed and blight and whatnot. So that's good. Um, I do like the blinding gas because I noticed if you upgrade it to level two, it does blind and chance to stun so that's a lot different um but i'm just so used to using her like to stay in the back row where she wouldn't most most monsters in dd1 couldn't hit the back row like even they had to come out with dlc monsters and new mobs just to address the issue of people in the back row like the fourth rank like it barely ever got hit unless you were in a boss fight um and, and if you knew what you were doing so you know but anyway um but i used to just i'm used to just sticking her in the back and have her pelt anybody in the other the enemy back ranks whether it's mushroom men trying to cast gas people witches or occultists casting spells like anybody doing bull crap in the back rank i would have the plague doctor pelt them with the bombs but now it's like, no, she can't hit the back rank, so I'm like, boo-hoo, I don't like Plague Doctor. Alright, you got some crazy skills still locked for her. She has a 3-4 hitting Blight Bomb. Yeah, yeah, it does do a lot more damage, which I've killed off. I've used it as finisher. Can I hit her? No, not with that. I love Pick to the Face. Grave Robber, I didn't use her as much in DD1, but I, I always liked that pick to the face. The very fact that it ignored armor is like, that was so good. I mean, it's just as good in this game. Alright, yours for the taking. Five mastery. We got currency and baubles, I believe. I'm still getting used to the difference between currency and baubles. I, I mean, you know, alright. But anyway, let's take all and get going. Are you shaken? There is so much worse in store. Oh, I'll, I got to say, you know what? My number one thing I'm glad about DD2 is that they brought back the voice guy from DD1. Like, that dude is epic, man. He really sets the tone for the games and makes things seem dark, sinister. There are no. yet places such as this, where a little light still gathers. 
All right, two candles reaching the end. Continue. Shall we continue, or is the lesson too demanding? Spend what you can, for wealth no longer has meaning. If indeed it ever did. All right, what we got here? Orphan wolf cold pet, which I unlocked in the light with the when I was upgrading the carriage. It's a pet. Five percent stress resist stress resistance per luxury gear item equipped. Ten percent positive relationship chance. Expires if not mountain mounted. One region. So you have to keep it mounted or it'll, the dog will run away, the wolf cub will run away. <laughs> Alright, um... Bear traps which seem to not really do jack in the last game. Concoction, I don't know where the hell I'm going. Like, in DD1, you, can, you, you bought supplies based on where you were about to head to. And here it's like, they're like, buy supplies, and you're like, uh, okay, where am I going? We'll find out. Like, well, damn. Glimmer of Hope. I think, let's get some of those. I got a lot of coarse powder in the last one. These trinkets are familiar, but I'm not, I don't want to rebuy them. What does this say? Movement res, stun res. Minus 10% death blow res. That was alright. Strength sapper. And a lot of these, like, I found them on the road. I'm not going to spend as much money on trinkets this time. Because at the end of my last run, I had, a, I had to throw a lot of stuff away. And a lot of them were trinkets because in Darkest Dungeon 1, you had a treasure chest that um, you just filled it up with trinkets. And if there was duplicates or something like that, you could sell them for money. Here, it's like if you have a duplicate trinket, it just sits around all day taking up space. And you can't get anything for it. Like you can't trade it in for a candle or, you know, turn it in for like, you know, some kind of points or something. It's just your only option is discard. Pet is free. I always take a pet. Oh, okay. All right. Uh oh. Let's grab a pet. Let's listen to the people. All right. You can pick destination first. All right. Oops. Well, did chalk it up to my ignorance. <laughs> okay. Um. But I'm definitely not gonna drop twenty or so dollars. I'm tempted to buy that again. A helping hand. The Radiant Flame won. A helping hand when all seems lost. I think you get that anyway. Helping. Resolute chance. Travel heal. Minus 25%. Candles of hope. Minus 15%. What is this? Can I just grab that? I guess. Spacious storage trunk. Damn. Can't afford it. If food inventory is less than 10, plus 10% 10 resolute chance. Increase stacking for food by 4 per stack. Where is food? That's the one that's the one thing I haven't seen in this whole game is how to buy food. Alright, combat items, bear traps, I don't really want most of this stuff. The laudanum, antivenom, yeah, I'm worried about that. Slime mold, whiskey, two targets. It doesn't say what it does. 
gives him another boost I guess of the same thing I still haven't learned the symbology of the game that's another big difference between Darkest Dungeon 1 and 2 is that Darkest Dungeon 1 was text you got 10% of this 5% of that whatever here is like the sim there's a lot of symbols okay when well, I got big trinkets food barrels oh that's the thing we read workable loom before each location, chance produce woven items. All right, out of stock. Out of stock. All right, let's go. One learns quickly when survival demands it. Give gives guys a little bit of boost. Um, like I definitely like. Pick to the face. It's really good. Um. In fact, let's start off by upgrading the first of all of their skills at least. But with the duelist, sometimes I do like using repost more than wicked slice or gunshot. I want gunshot to go up. Did I give? Yeah, so they all got used one thing. Oh, she has an another skill down here. What's this? I wasn't using these daggers that much. Oh, I don't want to actually use a point, though. I think that's wrong. Alright, let's do this. Conditions. Story. She did two of the story. I didn't like her second story okay what do I do with here here we go this is the the double dagger throw which I haven't been using let's check out this what is this repartee cool down two. self dodge times three um, taunt the enemy times two removes stealth I don't want that what's this do Requires target corpse. Uses three. Target clear corpse. Gain on hit. Heal 33% stealth. Alright. I'll use that. I want to check that out. Okay, so she has an extra skill. So maybe I did at least something right in the last run. Alright, um, let's go to, um, who do I want to give the second point to? I don't want to leave a point just sitting around because points sitting in the pool don't help me in combat, you know what I mean? I think I might give it to, um, nah, well I gave it to the gun, let's give it to his slash. Because he w did do a lot of our deal, a lot of our damage. Him and the grave digger did a lot, do a lot of damage. So spend it on him. All right. Each improvement. Here we go. Let's. A new variable in the equation of your fate. The first of many forks in the road. Choose your path. And the end of this go. Unbowed. Once equipped, it cannot be removed during this expedition. Proceed. Hold on, let me read what it does again before I commit to permanently applying something to my web, uh, my wagon. Uh, ready and flame. Resolute chance. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, all the stuff looks good. Radiant light will suffuse you with the strength of your convictions. All right. What does a dog do? 5% stress res per luxury gear item equipped, which I do not have. Plus 10% positive relationship chance. So I get that anyway. I guess that'll help my people get along with each other. And it'll expire if it doesn't get equipped. So let's put that in the pet junk. Once equipped, this cannot be removed during the to proceed. Yes. That's cute. You still got a lot of money. Did you find the food? No, I didn't. Um. Uh, okay. Let's go to food. Where be food at? P 
pestilence, curious, the sprawl, the tangle. The tangle was where I was the last time. No, I've done the sprawl and the tangle. I have the achievement for getting through both of them. But I think the tangle was a... Uh, I've seen both, but the tangle was the last one I was in, I believe. Alright, but anyway, uh... Let's do valley, regions... Okay, we gotta do all this, these check marks, which I have not done. All right, R and B. What is this? Food, in item, one target, ten percent max health, add five percent uh, chance to get diseased. Add quirk 5% chance. I don't know. That doesn't look like anything I want to give to my party, though. On the combat tab next... On the tab next to combat items. Okay. Yeah, I don't see how it helps much. I, I mean, I'm thinking of food like... It helps me on the road. Like, by the time I get to the end, why, you know, that doesn't really help me, I don't think. It doesn't seem like it. Like, 10, and it doesn't say heals 10 hit points. It says it gives you 10% max. So, that not that just like a buff and not like what you need as you travel to keep your party, like, healthy? Or maybe I'm thinking of food in the wrong way. Maybe food is different in this one. Because I'm thinking Darkest Dungeon 1 food where it it gave you health. And number one, you needed it as you traveled because you got hungry. And number two, it, it did provide health as you ate it. So it's like you could use it to keep guys patched up or take... Like if a dude was like really about to get, you know, bite the dust, you could heal him up real quick. Especially if you, you had a party that didn't have a Vestal. So that's what I'm expecting, but this food seems more like a buff food. Oh, okay. Yet yeah, worse food, but better than nothing. Okay. Yeah, buff basically. Food in this game, you eat it at the you eat at the end to have a buff for the following region you travel through. Some is better than the slime. Yeah, I've seen that slime. Okay. Alright. Alright, what's better than not having nothing is what y'all are saying, so I'm gonna take y'all's advice and grab some. Should I get enough for each guy in my team? That way, because I don't want somebody, I don't like, you know, for coming from Darkest Dungeon 1, one of the reasons I was so successful in de de beat beating it is because I didn't let my guys get killed. Like, I did everything I could to keep hero deaths at, to a minimum. You know, like, they they wanted you to try to treat the game that way where everybody was a disposable guy and you're just supposed to try to get money. But I realized you could get a lot more money if you could have reliable dudes that kicked ass that didn't, that didn't get killed. And they could come back with way more loot than just a team of throwaway lackeys or whatever. And so I've raised teams to get the job done and bring back cash and beat that ass. You know what I'm saying? Here it's like I have that same mentality. Like I don't want one guy to be buffed and everybody else like lagging or getting killed. You know what I mean? So let's get enough for four folk. Poultice. In item, poultice, one target. It gets rid of 25% disease res. Round start, 5% one. Yeah, I don't know. That thing seems like stuff is really expensive. Doesn't seem like it does that drastic of a good thing. And I don't want anything that makes... Hearing from skills. Alright, stagecoach items. 
Wait, do, do I? Ha I'm a stagecoach. I have. I have two items available. Trophies. Got pet. Got flame. So I do have room for stagecoach items. I think that would be wise to purchase. What do these do? If food inventory less than 10, resolute chance. That actually will work because I don't have that much uh, food in my thing. The 40 location chance produce woven items. Which, what does that mean? I don't know what a woven item is. Before each location, chance produce contraption items. I remember that from the last one. Increases stacking for contraption items by two per stack. I don't know. But let's get stagecoach. Well, do I want resolute chance? Well, let's see what a roving item is. Let's get this because I don't know what the hell it does and I want to find out. That's how you learn when you play it just raw. You just have to just try stuff even if it's stupid. So I bet you the chat, y'all probably like, damn, why'd he buy that? He wastes his money. What an idiot. <laughs> I don't blame you. Alright, let's see. Let's equip this. Good. An improvement. Alright, here. I think they do a lot of poison here, I remember. I don't know what my hero's goals are. I forgot. What are your goals, person? Hero goals. Scout a region with a watchtower. Okay, she needs to make it to the watchtower. Killing blow on pillagers. Use a glimmer of hope. He needs that flame. Visit the hoarder. Alright, so let's go to the town. That seems like more of a location where we can get rid of that kind of stuff. I think that's here. Curious. 100% academic studies location scouting. 200 academic studies. No time to bleed. Avoid the field hospital. I don't want that goal. Reward just candles of hope. Pestilent. Minus 20% disease res. Spelunk. Clear out the lair. Award mastery points or invest at the end and upgrade hero skills. That's actually a really good. I don't know, but you can get. If you do hero goals, you get skills too. But I do want to. What do you get for if you complete a region goal? I think that pillagers. I think this will give me candles and I can earn hero points on the way. I don't know about not another nameless city. Another inferno of mutilation and madness. Rest for the night, journey onward, yes. Check the map. The great cities of man. Ruined and aflame. Alright, we have gate. Destitute. I don't like the way you can't pick each inner item on the map, like Like, I want to read what each thing means. 
Okay, purple is a hazard to the armor, so we don't want to go that way. We have a encounter there and an encounter there. There's two encounters in a row there. What are these shrines of reflection? I think that's what I should be heading to. A boss fight rewards a trophy, reduces stuff. So what's that the final thing then? A resistance encounter. Hero stuff, trinkets, money, um, thing. Alright, but the shrines of reflection are what's permanent, I guess, so let's go and let's head to the right. We venture blindly forth, at the mercy of the road and its myriad dangers. Alright, these don't look like pillagers, these look like occultist assholes. Let's take a look at this guy. A fanatic. See, there's cultist, gaunt, cadaver, fanatic. Alright. Need the resistance against burn. Alright, so don't try to set him on fire, which I didn't have that in my mind anyway. Sixteen, sixteen. They don't seem to have much health. Let's get rid of that creature. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, let's work on getting you. I don't want interference. Measure out your violence and apply it judiciously. Okay, pick to the face of mine. Um. Since he didn't came up, let's put blight on him. Okay, that gives me a duelist advance without having to... Oh wow, I killed him. Cool. Alright, what does she want? Damn, she didn't die, but she's almost there. Let's see if we can pistol shot her and get her out of here. I didn't mean to do Noxious Blast. I thought that was on freaking whatchamacallit. Yeah, layers are tough at first. Those are most important. They give your heroes new skills. Okay. I meant to do... Oh, no, that was Noxious Blast. The enemy weakens and wanes. Alright, let's protect uh, old girl here. Can we kick this guy? Yes. And we can just throw knives at this dude. No, just pick. Can she pick him? No.
made him blind. Okay, so what? Let's, he moved up so he can get picked. Alright, just money and in bottles. So that's the hero. One of the hero's goals is to visit the hoarder twice. Oh, he sells stuff. What is this? Playing cards and item. Up 75, down 75. Kleptomaniac Kermogen. Stitching kit. One target. Heal 50% health. Now that's actually really good. 12 bucks. Two of them would cost me half my gold. But I think that's a good investment. Greater sacrificial host. Gain when hit. Block 33%. Apply on attack. Bellow skill. Stun 10%. Turn start. Yeah, first in turn order. Blind. What is this? Rat skull. High woman. Skill. Yeah, that's a lot of. Stress res. Death res. Minus down raise. I don't know what that means. Oh yeah, I'll go with this way. I need to get something to eat. I'm hungry again. Wow, time seems to be flying by. Damage, minus two speed. Yeah, I don't want any of that. Stagecoach item, positive relationship chance. Location scouting. Contraption items, alright. So basically all the stuff is just the same thing. Alright, well cool. We got some kits. Too bad you can't sell back old, like, stuff. Alright. We got, um... I guess we want to go straight ahead. Cause I don't want to do a layer yet. I want to get more a grasp on the game before I try like super challenge and stuff. Like getting to the end, accomplishing the goals, and doing stuff successfully with my heroes alive. I want to get that down pat first before I like challenge stuff. So let's con let's go straight ahead. Oh wait, I pick layer. No, I went straight. I don't know. All right, we had an armor down event. Can't use on the road. Only after Egypt. region. Okay, I appreciate that. Of absolute evil and wretchedness prepare yourself so this is a lair let's hit the tool tip and read it layers are where the region bosses dwell which that's not a place that I didn't want to go to reach the boss you must first win your way through two century battles you may retreat from the lair after each battle but the further you delve the more loot you'll retrieve 
Bosses have rare treasures and they are the only source of trophies. Trophies act as a key to the mountain. Alright, well, it looks like since we're here, let's just do our best. The library burns. And with it, the remains of philosophy, reason, and insight. What does this do? We need to clear health, alright. Let's pick the faces. Oh, she missed horse. Which I thought she would because she got the status on her. Let's pause. Let's keep working. the next. Yeah, we're possum on that highway may have been effing them up. Cause some people some monsters are just too trigger happy. So let's get rid of this guy. One less obstacle in our path. Let's do this. I want to try this out. Just to get rid of that one. Who is this shaman? He doesn't have much stuff beating his ass. I don't trust that guy. Yeah, putting blind on people, stressing people out and all this. We got to get rid of him. What does this do? Mistimed is directed. Got repost still. I really hate that she can't hit the back row. And I don't think they should be able to repost people who are in the back row. Like, well, what's the point of there between being ranged and melee if melee guys can't hit the people way or far away? You know what I'm saying? It's like it defeats that defeats the point of having melee be melee. Melee means up close. Range means far. But in order to make the game more difficult, or to keep up with difficulty, they, it's kind of like they have to try to do something. Oh damn, that dude couldn't even withstand that death, that, uh, whatchamacallit. Let's bolster and get rid of her stress. She's like, no, that doesn't work. Maybe that's the level two, um, bolster. Looted money and trinkets. All right, let's advance.
start working on that big dude. Promising development. Try to make him invasive and all that kind of crap. Alright, we can't. Let's see if I can shoot this guy from here. Yeah. And let's blind him for a change. Take that. Oh, he's been marked. Cool. Can I smash him? Yeah. Alright, oh, I gotta heal this dude. Damn. Let's get some poison darts on her. Oh, she's almost dead. We definitely better heal up before uh, she loses. What's gonna call it? Let's put tracking shot her on her. That way, it'll take up our turn. And then, uh, maybe I could have had him pass and heal, but let's do this. Extinguished at last. There's no way he can reach her. But I think he'll get more health if he passes. No, you don't. Why did that, why did that happen the other time? I guess if he's in the back row with nothing else to do, he can pass. No, oh, that does it stress you out? Fuck. Well, that's not what I wanted at all. A petty hindrance. Target needs to have at least plus five stress for a bolster. Oh, okay. Five or more, rather. Okay, thanks for that information. Alright, do I think next rewards, just lots of stuff. I think I'm gonna try it because my party is in, in the worst shape and I do want to get some experience on what the bosses are like he teeters madly upon his ladder reveling in the fiery destruction of human accomplishment scorched books damaged books yeah they just block him from being hit by stuff can I shoot him directly? Yeah, librarian. He's immune to fire. He's immune to being moved. He's high against stun and bleed. But he can be blighted. Let's do a longer range campaign. I want to go a directly against this guy instead of wasting time on books. Let's just bolster anybody just to get our shields up. And then his blind is 30%. 
so he's basically about to save for bleed and blind. Alright, that miss. How many turns does he get? There's like there's like three turns in a row. Oh, uh, he blocked it. Bullshit. And see, with her noxious blast, she can't really do shit, man. They're immune to blight. It's not enough. Oh, uh, he dodged it. That you, that guy who's hanging on a fuck a freaking thing dodged the bullet. Get real. See, this is bullshit. She has nothing she can do. She is so useless. Like, she is so useless. But deadly all the same. Can she and he can't be picked yet? shouldn't have that self if she less than 33% heal let's see if we can do this and can he be hit by anything times. Savor it. that they don't have a healer it's like you every fight is like this they just pummel on you with cheap moves hiding behind either other mobs or some other kind of stuff while your team slowly breaks down too bad she can't reach that guy a miscalculation perhaps oh she's blinded I mean, there's, I mean, you're wasting moves on stacks of fucking books. Because you're, everywhere you go, you're limited in what you can do. That's bullshit. Dog 
dodge, dodge, dodge. And he's got another, he's got two more goals. He's got three goals in a fucking row. That's four in a row. And he healed himself with what? Okay, we've got to... Extinguished at last. He dodged there, of course. And she needs to heal herself. I bet she's gonna summon more books. Oh no, he's gonna just keep pounding us with AOE damage. See, yourself. and we can't do shit about it because we have no healer on our team. Fight through the fatigue. And then, not only is he doing damage, his constant application of status effects means that we're taking damage even when he doesn't move. So it's like, fuck man, what a cheap piece of shit. Look how many turns he gets. He's constantly going. Like, he gets four or five fucking turns in a row. So basically, everyone might have a one last move. That's if he doesn't burn us down with a new thing. I probably should have destroyed his books. And now, the greatest test of all. Uh, you went to the boost, I see rest in peace. He's basically, yeah. And then everyone's armor down, all this shit. Sacrifice bestows an uncertain absolution. This boss is a DPS race. You don't have to do these in Act One. Try and try again. You All right, break cool. Through this I mean, I just work. wanted to. I mean, like I say, I'm new to it, so I have to see what's behind the door. You know what I mean? I mean, so it's kind of like no big deal because it's like up ahead. If I had been playing Darkest Dungeon Two for like. 25 years and I had like a doctorate on Doctor, you know, Darkest Dungeon 2 and then you see me play the match and get killed. Now then I should be ashamed and embarrassed because you would say, well damn dude, you've been playing for 25 years and you didn't study it so much you got a doctorate and you didn't know to beat this guy. So, you know, yeah, you'd be ashamed. But for me, just sticking my head in the door for the first time, not knowing what I'm up against, what moves he does, you know, how powerful, you know, his spells or attacks or whatnot are. You know, I'm not ashamed at all. It's like, a lot of it, it's just the same stuff I've seen already. It's like, number one, if you don't know what's coming, you're always at a disadvantage. Number two, it, it's like, it's the same thing. Every move he makes does damage and adds a debuff and then he gets to keep buffing himself constantly or whatever it's like it's and you do have to get rid of things but you know it's a damage race and that's why everything has 20 plus hp the smallest stack of books had 20 hp it's like it would take three of my characters and you know the way the team you have their damage is so piecemeal you know, this person can only throw this or shoot that. This person, you know, you might have one good move like pick to the face or um, wicked slice. 
but they'll, they're conditional moves, and you can only hit one guy at a time, so it's like, ugh. And then with the the gas, the play doctor not being able to hit two enemies at once when she throws the bomb sucks. It's like you're so nerfed, and you can't. And another thing, they're, they're cheaping you out on just the basic fact that you can't heal yourself reliably. Like you know, all that's like chip damage and stuff. You know, bullshit that it accumulates over time and wears you down with no ability to heal. The only people who can heal are the grave robber who can only heal herself with the absent and the plague doctor who can only heal you if you're already really hurt you have to be like below 30 percent health already and you have to have like a you be suffering from a condition so it's kinda like you can't even start healing the guy until he's almost dead already and it's like well fuck you know what do you expect alright so we're here at the altar of hope for some reason All right, working fields, living city. What do we have? Wisdom will help you choose a path. Resource three more. Will ensure you survive it. Three plus eight is uh, eleven. We have twelve. I want to get the stage coach wheel points up because I don't want unnecessary battles because my wheels ran out of power. Blessed rest for the warriors of our cause. All right. Uh, armor points. What we got here? This takes five. Five. Yeah, we're not gonna do those. Let's go to. The working fields. These are beaten, broken souls, and yet our fortunes ride with them. What does she need? Let's make her fast as possible. Oh, these get a trinket unlocked. Get this. Of sanity in a sea of madness. Nah, I don't want that. It sucks. Alright, how do you embark? Why? Is to make it real once more. Alright, let's go ahead. This part I never get where you're in the darkness of nothingness in the coach. Like, huh? Where does that make sense at? The seat of your denial. All right, let's do denial. First, precariously in the murky gloaming. Commonalities between the mythos of ancient cultures was not a new area of study for either of us. But it was there that we first noticed the pattern. The crossroads. Wait by the lantern's light and welcome what help may come. All right, here we go. Pride. More devastating than the horrors of a hundred campaigns. All right, and what's the problems? All right. Natural swings. Get over there. Melee, another melee person that melee skills on the dang plague doctor has sworn off the bottle. Okay, well, that doesn't seem too bad. Amateur armor smith. Round start, 5% chance to have an armor. Alright. 
bad digestion, fear of zombies, chance to be resolute, that's really nice, steady, doesn't get moved, resolute chance, that's nice, prone to investigating the dark arts, that was deadly in the last game, so... Alright, and out of all the skills I unlocked, this one really didn't do any much. Whoops. What is this? I mean, if they leave a corpse, yeah, it's useful, but most of the time it doesn't. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the original five for now on the move set. Alright, and there's nothing to do but get started, really. Ready. This rutted roadway will finally take you home. Comforts are exhausted. Ahead, only trial and tribulation. The bulwark of your denial is giving way. Let's get rid of the toughest one. She can't do anything but throw gas at the front. Which, like, you need her to do stuff like that. Like, I need, like, that's what this guy is for and the other guy is for. Smash guys in the front. But oh well. I don't, I did waste her move by putting blight on that guy when I was just gonna kill him. I forgot that I was going to use him for a pistol shot. Ooh, that took a lot out of her. Let's get rid of the blight off of him. Even though that's kind of a Welcome waste of move, from since it could agony. be used for healing, but let's try to kill her. Yeah. And another thing I noticed about this game, it takes you a whole move or a turn to remove a status effect. They can just reapply it right after you removed it. And you still take the damage and you wasted that other player's, that other character's turn. Because they have multiple people who can apply the same status effect on every monster team. So it's kind of like, they doubled down on cheap tactics since Darkest Dungeon 1. Basically the monsters are buffed and you've been nerfed. Let's get rid of all of them. Good, get repost. I knew they were gonna try cheese. So cheese resolved. Reprieve until the next right, test take is put on. before you. So we haven't even made it to the town yet. So, I, when you start this journey here, like maybe you should just go. Oh, okay, you have to start at an end. I guess it makes sense. There are yet places such as this, the where torch and crown still gathers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before I go any further, I have to get something to eat. I haven't eaten in a long time, and I'm yawning and getting agitated. That's why I didn't shoot that lady in the last round with the uh, highwayman, because I'm not thinking straight. So what I want to do right now is thank everyone for watching, and especially all the commentators in chat. Um, 89 Crispin, thank you for showing up. You were 
first to speak. Uh, Holger Q, I appreciate you coming in with all your help. Uh, stay tuned for the next stream. Whenever you see me stream, um, feel free to pop in, say hello. Um, your, your advice and hips, hints and tips are always welcome. That being said, I hope you all have a great day. I'm fixing to leave it here and go get something to eat. Uh, might be back on later. Not sure. But anyway, I want y'all to have a great day. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.